All right, social studies. Last class of the day. Oh, I need water. Where's your water bottle? I forgot it. All right, I want you to turn to page 40 in your manual and page 68 in your textbook. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Don't just yell my name. I won't respond to that. Yes, Rachel. Can you what? Yes. M. When when she's done. Miss Reed, what was the page on your textbook? Um, the textbook. I need page 68 and 40 in your manual. You will turn and you'll see a picture of George Washington in front of the Federal Hall in New York City. Very wise man. All right. Let's actually do a little review. And we're going to come back to what is a precedent? We're going to talk about this a little bit more today, but let us, what is a precedent? When somebody sets a precedent, not a president, a precedent. Owen. It has nothing to do with a president. M. Yes. It's setting an example. Who was our first president? James. Yes. And he, I mean, if you can even imagine was to think about being the first president of the United States. He had a lot of examples to such, did he not? Being the first president in a brand new country. So that is pretty amazing. What is an electoral college? You will find that on page 51 in your textbook. What is an electoral, electoral college? And they still do have them in our elections today. Page 51, I need everyone to star, I need everyone to focus. It is time to get our minds back into the books. What is the Electoral College, Emmy? Electors. Talk louder, please. That's right. So but are you all on page 51 in your textbook? Yeah. It said, wow, it says right on the top of the page, Electoral College. <gasps> wow. <laughs> so it says on the bottom, the, it says people vote for their candidates. States choose electorals based on how the people vote. Electors from each state vote on who the president will be. So who votes for the president of the United States? Jeremiah. Yes, we the people. What is, or let's see, we're just doing, talking about, what is the cabinet of the president? Is it a drawer where he keeps his underwear and socks? <laughs> <laughs> the presidential underwear and socks is the, is the cabinet. No, that is not it. If you look on page 50, Seven in your textbook. Washington's cabinet is what it says in bold at the top of the page. And if you go down and scan the page in the bold let words, what are you going to find for cabinet? Olivia. Yes. So they don't live their lives in drawers. This is a is called a cabinet. These are people that the president chooses. These are close 
working people that work closely with the president on a daily basis. It is the, pre the president's cabinet, and it still exists today. President Biden has his own cabinet. Oftentimes they're called secretary, secretary of state, secretary of different jobs that they hold, and they're very important jobs, and they hold a lot of importance for this country. Because George Washington chose four men he trusted and knew well. The men did not always agree, but Washington wanted the best men, even if they did not agree. Is it sometimes a good thing to not always agree with one another? Yes. Is it a good thing to debate ideas? Yes. yes. And the Founding Fathers knew that, and they encouraged that, because they knew if everyone followed the same thing, that would not be good because then we are going to get back to King George III, where everybody followed him, listened to him, and had a, did not have a mind of their own. Washington gave each man, each of the men a job. Thomas Jefferson became Secretary of State. He helped America and other nations get along. Alexander Hamilton, we have him aboard on our class. <laughs> became the Secretary of the Treasury. What do you think that job was? Secretary of Treasury. Tyson. Uh, he helped with all the money. Yeah. If they had a problem with money, he yes. would help them. Yes. That's a big job, Alexander Hamilton. He took care of all the nation's money. He, and Henry Knox became the Secretary of War. So you see they all had the title of secretary. Now that doesn't mean they sit at a typewriter or a computer and take notes. That's just a formal title that the cabinet has, and they still have for that matter. And Edmund Randolph became the attorney general. He was in charge of making people obey the national law. So there you have George Washington, President Washington's cabinet. Oh, and then if you turn the page, we see a bust of them or a statue. There's George Washington on top. For some reason, that doesn't look like George Washington. Hmm. And then Thomas Jefferson, and then our very own Alexander Hamilton, <laughs> Henry Knox, and Edmund Randolph. So that is what the cabinet was. So, and then we talked briefly, we were already talking about the Western Settlement. What is the Western Settlement? Let me get out a map. Where were the original, how many, first of all, how many states were the part of the original structure of the United States of America? Grant, 13. And they all were located where? They're all located in one area, which was not surprising. Cool. Yeah. They were all bordering the Atlantic Ocean. What is this way? Anybody know? If you, if you cross the Atlantic, what will we get to? Which was a very important aspect of our first colonies, James. Yes. Europe. So it is not at all surprising that our original 13 states bordered the Atlantic Ocean because they travel from Europe to the colonies. So what is the Western movement or settlement, territories? Here are the original. This is north. Got my little, this is east. This is south, and this is west. Oh, look at all these states that were not there originally. If you just completely covered up this whole area of our country, they did not, it didn't exist then. We were not even a state. Wisconsin wasn't even a thought. So with me saying that, what is the Western settlement? Cool. Were they um, very deep west? Yes. 
Why do you think they'd want to go west with all this land? Why would you need land? Owen. Make states? Yes. So this all this area here is gonna get pretty crowded. So yes, the Western movement was West moving all the way over to California, Oregon, Washington, and then we have the Pacific Ocean. So that's where you have to stop. So on the Western border is the Pacific Ocean, and on the Eastern border is the Atlantic Ocean. And so this whole land needs to be discovered and made into states. How many states in the United States now? Boy, how many states now in the United States of America? How many did you say? 14. 13? No, that's the original. What do we have now? How many states in the United States of America? When Sheen? 50. So a lot was created from the original 13. Now we have, what is the Battle of Fallen Timbers? We still have the pesky uh, Europeans that we're dealing with. On page 62, <laughs> they won't go away. <laughs> yes, they're leprechauns. <laughs> All right, let us look on 62, Battle of Fallen Timbers. Who wants to tell me what that is? There's a bold word that says, huh, Battle of Fallen Timbers on page 62. Let's wake up, friends. 62, bold word, Battle of Fallen Timbers. Luke, read that paragraph, please. No, Washington picked General Anthony Wayne. Right. So the Battle of Fallen Timbers was a battle between who? Olivia. Uh, the Indians. And Wayne's army fought the British and the Indians, but then they say they defeated the Indians at the Battle of Fallen Timbers. Wayne's victory brought many changes. After the Battle of Fallen Timbers, Washington sent John Jay to Britain. Jay told the British to leave American lands. The British agreed. America and Britain began to work together. Yes. At this time, America had problems with Spain. Yeah. <laughs> There's always someone. Now, where is Spain? Is that in America? No. Where is Spain? When Sheen? Yes, in another European country that is causing problems. Europe. Just when you think we've got it nipped. So, now we have Spain. That Who else? Who sponsored Christopher Columbus to sail the ocean blue? Tyson. Isabella. From? Spain. Bingo. So think about that, friends. Queen Isabella from Spain sponsored, gave money, gave ships to Christopher Columbus. The very first voyage to the Americas. That was in the 1700s. And so we are now still fighting Spain in the Americas. So, it, the, just because America has fought the battle, the Revolutionary War, does not mean everything is peachy keen. There's still issues going on. There is a lot of land that is in the Western settlement area. All of this, in Spain, in Britain, and other er groups of people, have been dealing with these cut states on this land, trading, 
for a long time. So do you think they appreciate the United States of America to tell them to get out? Do you think that they like that, that they have been trading, they have been doing commerce in the United States? Well, they're not completely the United States yet, but in the Americas. Do you think that Spain wants to leave? No. No, they do not. So I'm back on page 62. They argued about land in the south. Spain would not let Americans ship goods down the Mississippi River. So where is the Mississippi River? Is it just a little teeny tiny river that is meandering through some of the... No? No. Where is it? So it's a big body of water? Yes. Yes, it is. This one does not have it. Yes, the Mississippi River is a huge body of water. And so the, uh, Spain was telling America that they couldn't use the Mississippi River. And through the city of New Orleans. Who has ever heard of New Orleans? It exists today. What state is New Orleans in? Jeremiah, would you mind opening that door? It yeah. is like all of a sudden stifling yeah. here. Yes, please. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's just gotten oppressive, this mask. So New Orleans is in Louisiana. Who has ever heard of the state Louisiana? It is right here. So it is, it's, this is south, it's very south. So that is the land of contention right now. Spain does not want to leave it. They're not allowing us to use the Mississippi River, which is a huge body of water. So, but when Britain and America stopped fighting, Spain settled its problems with America. Spain did not want to cause trouble. Well, that was nice of them. Britain and America might join armies and fight back. Changes also happened in America. Settlers in the Northwest were happy with the national government. It helped them. Who was not happy? So remember, we, we talked about this earlier. The North, the, North, um, the Northwest was happy. Who was not happy with the national government? Owen. Yes. So we are always... We talked about the national government, we talked about the state government, and we talked about the local government. This is all kind of a refresher, because we haven't done social studies in a while. And if you look on page 64, there's that little box that says types of government. Who is, the, who is in charge in the national level? James, the president. And then we have our Congress, Senate and the Supreme Court. Who is in charge or who do we elect to, in charge of the state? Who is, so we as um, Wisconsinites elect a what? Not a president, but a what, Emmy? A governor. a governor. Does anyone know the governor of Wisconsin? Owen. Governor James. Yes. And then there's a legislature and courts. And then we have for Dane County has a local branch of government. Who is our mayor? Does anybody know? I'm drawing a blank. I know it if I heard it. I would too. Oh my goodness. I am absolutely drawing a blank. That is horrible. Our mayor. <laughs> Is it chicken? No, today it's a leopard. Gotcha. Conway? I didn't see it with a different person. I did too. So Conway. Conway. Mayor Conway. And we have a city council. We also have courts. So those are our friends. Thank you. This is thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I went blank. Okay, so the capital, where is the capital of the United States of America? Christian? Washington, D.C. 
So interestingly enough, the national government needed a capital. So New York City was the nation's capital when George Washington became president, which is interesting. Not, not anymore. So Hamilton and Jefferson, who did not agree on the debt from the Revolutionary War, the war was expensive. Some states now owed a lot of money. We are on page 66. I wanted to get the city area was called. So now let's, I'm trying to find friends where on page 67, it talks about the capital moving to Washington, DC. Washington asked Pierre Lafont to plan the city. Lafont set up the city with grids of streets. Remember we did that little map grid, which was fun last Friday? That was of Washington, D.C. He planned wide avenues leading to the president's house in the Capitol. He put aside special areas for colleges, monuments, and his national church building. Lafont planned a grand city known as the city of Washington. Who do you think it was named after? Washington, D.C.? Is there a coincidence there, <coughs> might I ask? Tyson. The first president is named Washington. That's right, named after President Washington, George Washington. It was named after the first president. The area was called the District of Columbia. It was named after the explorer, Christopher Columbus. Today, the capital's name is Washington, D.C. So now we have reached where we need to be today. That was a bit of a review, bless you. So here we have that word again at the top of page 68. Precedence of the president. Kind of a tongue twister. What again does the word precedent mean? Ella, setting an example. George Washington knew he was setting precedents for future presidents. He took care with each precedent he set. As a general, Washington's most important precedent was to let Congress command the army. So what I want you to do is I want you to read 68 through 70 and I want you to work on page 40 of your manual. Now read carefully. Part of studying comprehension is what we are working on right now. Everybody look at me, please. I want you to read these pages and find your answers. This is kind of like your comprehension pages that you work on every week. This is why we do this. I could sit up here and spoon feed you all every single answer, but there are you learning. No, no. No. You are going to learn by reading and by answering these questions. Now, if you have a problem and a question, please raise your hand and I will help you. I will walk around and I will answer questions and I will be happy to answer a problem and help you with the problem that you're having. But the purpose of this exercise is for you to use your manual with your textbook, coincide with each other to find answers. And that, friends, is what you will be doing for the rest of your academic career. You are going to have to find answers in your textbook for the questions in your manuals. And that is how you study, and that is how you learn. Now, if I just sat up here, read from the textbook, and gave you all the answers, it would be easy peasy. But that is not how you're going to learn, and that is not how you're going to learn to study. All right, so any questions on what you need to do? And here's what I'm going to do. If you get done with this, you can work on your math so you don't have homework. It's going to be like a little study hall when you are done with your social studies. All right, questions? Grayson. Um, are we going to turn this um, into a study today? I am going to walk around like I did last time. I would like for you to keep these in your manuals so you don't lose them. Can you just put the door stopper down there in there, Jeremiah? There you go, just to get air circulating in here. So, questions, comments? 
So work on page 40 when you get done with that. Get out your math or anything else that you want to work on. We'll have like a little mini study hall. You may begin working now.